day or even the weekend. Yeah. And it's the same thing we see for like any multiplayer online based games. I know people were complaining about Anthem. They had the demo this past week. And a lot of people are having issues with, uh, I think, infinite loading was what was being described. And the problem, of course, is that every time somebody can play your game, you're losing out. And as you said, like, what happens if a game goes down for a weekend? Like, this is one of the things a lot of people complain about when it comes to multiplayer titles for, like, opening week. Like, you can't, yeah. you know... You literally cannot, you know, stress test retail conditions. You know, when you have tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of people playing the game at one time. Yeah. And it unfortunately it happens, and you run into that situation of, you know, if your game is down for three days, that is so much revenue loss, and also so much bad word amount being spread. You're losing out on people buying microtransactions. You're losing out on any reviews. Um, what's that game? Uh, the game from the developers of, what was it, Ark, that came out I think, a week or so ago. The I think it was Atlas. Like, they had this whole thing planned where they were going to have, like, streamers playing the game. And, you know, it's going to be opening weekend, you know, first looks and all that great stuff. And every single person who streamed that game had problems with it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say this: the the team that's in charge of the servers was not happy with that idea to begin with. Yeah, because <laughs> like you say, you can't, you cannot stress test for something like that. It's impossible mm -hmm. uh, unless you release it for free, like uh, a week before for a trial run, and just make sure everybody's on board. But when you have that many people, half of them are not going to understand. You know, this is their time and their money they're spending. They expect it to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's another really big point. It's one of these why I always hate games that have, you know, real life or real world timers to it. Is that when you're trying to make videos, write posts, write a book, do these talks and all that other stuff, your time becomes very limited in terms of when you can and can't play video games. I know yeah. it seems like the, uh, it's again like that Twilight Zone ironic twist that I have all these games, but I can't play any of them because I got all the work to do. Oh yeah, no, I, I know exactly what you mean. I, this is the reason why I've not played hardly any of the games that have come out in the last like three years. It's just there's just no time. Mm -hmm. But like, and that's the point. Like, if I only had let's say forty five minutes between eight oh five and eight fifty at night to play a game, and let's say that game is down or they're doing a, a patch. Or maybe, hell, let's say it's a game that requires you to log on every day, but I miss the opening window, or I miss the bonus window by 30 minutes, and I lose stuff. I'm not yeah. going to be able to play that game. Yeah. Yeah, it, it does stink. And it, like, if you also, if you're late uh, to a new, like, uh, season or something like that, and your friend, like, um, I'm trying to remember this, this stupid game. Um, uh, the the RPG that's so big right now that I, or PoE yeah Path of mm -hmm. Exile yeah if a new season starts and you're behind the curve already then you know what's the point no one wants to play down to your level and uh, mm -hmm. you know you're you're already behind so I don't know it just seems like that that strikes against you <laughs> and you might not want to play it mm -hmm. or if the game has like that kind of like a reward system, or, you know, like, you must do a battle every, like, this is an MMO thing, that they, or, I'm sorry, not MMO, a free-to-play thing, they have, you know, like, those time-limited events where you have to keep winning battles to build your points. But what happens when that event ends at, like, at 5 o'clock in the morning? You know, are you really going to stay up till 5 o'clock in the morning and make sure you get the best, you know, reward for your arena or your raid or whatever? Yeah, that does, it digs into a lot of the um, problems with game, with game addiction especially in the free to play space because they do they're very time demanding and very specific uh, increments like they don't they don't have much leeway for oh the person who lives on uh, in a different time zone you know if the game is based in like is based in the european time zone and you know the people in the united states suffer and, and vice versa you know people around the world um, who are are dependent upon like the united states eastern time zone servers uh, you can get screwed, and, and I'm, that actually hurts the company's bottom line at the same time. But mm -hmm. I don't know. There's no magic formula. I really don't know. 
or when I force uh, Mojo to stay up till 6 o'clock in the morning watching me play a video game when it's only like 1 uh, or 12, 30, 1 o'clock my time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like the whole time limit thing, it really uh, pushed me off of something like Hitman as well. Uh, the episodic games that were released, or season 1, season 2 of that. Where you have those limited time uh, contract kills, if you miss it out, you're done until they play that again. And it's a, here's a here's a question for you, Robin, for the chat or for people watching this recorded. What did you think about time sensitive uh, Steam sales? For those of you who forgotten, like for like good like four or five years, they had those limited time uh, sales during like the summer sale or spring sale. Where, like, if you, let's say it's, like, every two hours, they had some super heavy discount on top of the normal discount. But if you miss it, then you're not going to get that. And a lot of people liked it by the fact that, it, you know, it threw a little bit more energy into the sale. But then, as you said, there's that other issue. What happens if there's a game that goes on heavy discount, but it's 4 o'clock in the morning your time? Are you going to stay up to make sure you get it? Yeah, it seems like it's based on a problem that's that I'm hearing more and more and more about over time, and that is uh, a lot of people have an inability or have have a tendency to not want to miss out um, on I don't like flash sales and and those those things that are, are happening at a very specific time. Like there's that that desire to not be left out of that particular thing, and because those things are happening all the time in a wide variety of media, like it. I love, I do, I like that sale uh, tendency because it does, it does add that energy, it's a little more exciting, and I don't mind so much if I miss one, you know, like, whatever, I miss my sale, I can, I, I'll, I'll be able to sleep just fine that night, but I know there's a lot of, pro a lot of people out there who have that very specific problem that they cannot miss out, like, mm -hmm. there's that, there's a, just a twitch happening in your head, and you just gotta, you have to stay up, and you have to get it, because otherwise, I don't know, I don't know what that, what the, um, result is that's, that's happening in your head that you're foreseeing that causes you to not want to do this but mm -hmm. I've seen that problem arise more and more amongst people and I've heard people talk about how they have that issue themselves and it is a problem and um, I don't know how you get around that but it's certainly something that people take advantage of mm -hmm. yep. and it's, uh, again it's very prevalent in the mobile and free to play space that you know every game has to have you know a daily login but then there's a special time event. You know, you only have two weeks to get something, or you know, uh, I don't know, unlocks a special thing. Like um, like I've been playing that free to play game, Marvel Strike Force, and they have daily raids. There's daily quests to do. They just did another event for another character, stuff like that. And again, it's one of those things where how do you find the time to do all that? And Again, you can, of course, spend money to get around all that. You know, why grind for two weeks and hopefully you get something when you could just spend, you know, $50 and unlock it right here and now? Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of, um, like, that, that particular item, as I've gotten older, I feel more on the side of, yeah, just buy it. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, you don't have time. But when you're younger and you're able to mm -hmm. compete... And you spend all this time to, to be competitive, and then someone comes and buys their way in. It does. It feels like it cheapens the experience and makes it unfair. Yeah. Uh, so I I get both sides of that, but it is it's it's a difficult thing to, to balance, and you're not going to make everyone feel feel good about it in the end. So you just got to kind of pick a direction and head that way. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, the podcast I did with Raw Mean that this was I think two three months ago about trying to make ethical free to play design is going to be going up soon. And we talked about that. That, you know, if you spend, you know, three weeks grinding for a power-up or for an item or a rare character, and then somebody comes along and spends $30 and they get immediately, you know, that's going to throw you off of that game because you're never going to be able to compete like that. You know, I spend five weeks, you spend $20, and you're ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that a lot of uh, companies have gone the way of selling unique items that you can't achieve necessarily and um, the achievements but you can't buy skill you know I think that that is the the, the trade-off that they have um, in those games going these days and, and I don't know I think people still will complain about it uh, that you might be able to um, and I'm sorry you should be always able to unlock something with uh, time as well as money but like you shouldn't be able to buy uh, something that it takes 
um, oh, I don't know. You shouldn't buy, be able to buy uh, a way to win. I guess, of course, the pay to win uh, mm -hmm. stuff. We've kind of, I guess we've kind of gone over for that. Yeah. I've gone over that plenty, I, I mean. Mm -hmm. And there's just no like, easy way to do this because if you want to convince people to buy stuff in your game or stick around and keep playing, then you got to make that stuff enticing. But mm -hmm. on the same breath, how you make that stuff enticing and then, you know, slap a uh, price uh, tag on it and try and convince them, oh, you know, spend $50 here. And that's, and this will be our final point. We kind of had our first topic already, I guess, just talking about this. But right. it's one of those issues that we see with the mobile side of things. Like, why should anyone spend 50 plus dollars on a mobile game? I, I cannot wrap my head around that. I'm I'm right now debating about spending five dollars on an indie game. Why should I give a mobile game fifty to a hundred dollars of my money, and then again I will have to spend that again, and again, mm -hmm. and again, and it never ends. And that's the whole uh, crutch of a crutch of a free to play or mobile design that it is an endless drain on your money. Yeah, your money and your time. I again getting getting a little older and having less time. You you do find ways to uh, enjoy something more um, in, in using your time. And a lot of times, it's either you focus on one game for a longer period of time, or if you want to play a whole bunch of games, you spend more money uh, to do so. Especially if you're on the mobile side of things. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's a different perspective and growing on it and having worked in those on those games it's just it gives you a little bit more perspective i guess but at the same time there's so many evil things going on that i'm i'm sure you and ramin have have gone over plenty mm -hmm. apparently a new sign is causing like some kind of pavlonian condition for cake so i think the uh, josh box idea i think we may have to turn into a josh cake or there we'll you go that's what we'll do Sub subliminal advertising here folks yeah. I need to get it's bought all, by all on purpose. Yeah. I need to get bought by Big Cake. That's what we need to do. The Big Cake industry. <laughs> big we need cake. to And that'll be perfect. Yeah, there you go. If a Tasty Cake wants to sponsor the streams, let us know. We'll be here for that. Hostess, anybody. Mm hmm But yeah. And I guess my final thoughts then, like, again I I know like for you, Rob, like have you ever spent big money? <laughs> On like Sorry. a mobile or free to play game, like, uh, I'm talking I guess, like let's say like above sixty dollars on mobile no. game. No, I think I've spent ten dollars, maybe yeah. fifteen dollars on a game that I spent almost a year on, um, and I sometimes feel bad for that that I'm not giving these developers money that is, you know, in in accordance with the time I'm spending on it, um, draining their resources and stuff. But no, I mean I've never felt the need to and. Um, no, certainly not that much. It's it seems ridiculous, and yet spending that many hours on a game, uh, it's a no brainer in the PC console market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, like it's kind of like trying to figure out where the value is in that money. Like, why should I be spending? Like this whole issue with pricing. Why should I give your game thirty dollars when I go buy this game for five dollars, or I buy sixty dollars for this one? Like, um. Mm -hmm. To give you an example, Resident Evil 2, the remake, came out this week, and I am, you know, salivating over playing it. Unfortunately, I didn't get the press key for it, but it's $60, and they're saying it's about, like, 10 to 15 hours of content if you know what you're doing in that game. And again, it raises that point. Do I spend $60 for 10 hours? What if I spend $10 for 20 hours of content in another game? I mean... Mm -hmm. XCOM 2, I bought that for $40, and that's easily over 100 hours if you keep playing that game. And oh, yeah. What about the people who play Dwarf Fortress? You know, that's free, and you can, you know, that's enough hours to last before the sun, you know, the sun will burn out before you run out playing Dwarf Fortress. Yeah, I, I, Mike brought up an interesting point that I, I recommend people look into the Facebook not refunding uh, the um, children using their parents' credit cards. I did not. I read that article just before we went on, and it was uh, a little shocking. But you know, it's Facebook, and they're not exactly everyone's friend right now. Mm -hmm. Hair's going every which way again. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> oh, there's one thing you can do: just, mm -hmm. just take it all off. Just like uh, last week, we were talking about. Getting a sponsor by uh, Gillette. 
If yeah, there you go. Again, we could do our uh, twin uh, shaving uh, stream, uh, unshaving or uh, unbearing streams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And again, like, like what Draken's saying, like, there's people who bought the Labo. Like, as we said, I think this will be like my wrapper for this uh, topic, but money and time are finite elements for people. I know time is a construct, and, you know, there's no such, you know, time and space and all that, but we only have so many hours a day and so much money to spend on video games. Mm -hmm. And if anything annoys us or anything bothers us or anything gets in the way of that, it's going to ruin somebody's experience. Again, if you have an open... like Going back to stuff like... Um, that pirate game or the Anthem. Like, if those issues, like with Anthem, happen the first week of actual release, you know people are going to be up in arms about it. The same that happened with Fallout 76. That if you buy a game, you expect it to work day one. Now, if you're playing a trial or a demo, that is, it's annoying, but, you know, you're not really spending money on that. But... Once you're, you know, robbing people of their free time or their money, they're not going to stick around. And you really can't, I don't think you can really sustain games anymore on those mythical whales, you know. Hoping that that one person, you know, the uh, rich oil tycoon, gets hooked on a Clash of Clans and spends, you know, $1.5 million on gems. Yeah, no, I mean, there's only so many out there, and there's there's more and more games trying to gobble them up. Which, um, oops, boy, I'm fidgety, and it's causing all kinds of ruckus over here. Oh my gosh, there we go. Sorry, everybody. Um, but yeah, it's it's tough. And I, again, I'll, I'll defer to you and uh, Ramin going over that stuff because he is he is very wise on on those uh, particular topics. Yeah. And like a uh, funny thing, I spoke to him like a few weeks ago on LinkedIn, and we were talking. I talked to him about spending money on that Mortal Strike Force. Like the biggest thing I spent on that was ninety nine cents. That's my big oh my god I spend money on mobile games like oh well I'm playing a, I think it was Star Trek Bridge Commander I just spent $500 I'm like oh okay then well I think you beat me on that front mm -hmm. 